please let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What are your temptations? I understand that it's the equivalent to accelerating a car from zero to 65 miles in one second. And for the record, I have not asked you, do you face temptations? But what are they? I am not asking you to stand up and say them in public, but to let's aware of them in a realistic way. Like you, I too, face various temptations of a different nature. We need to hear about Jesus' temptation because they are always so nearly to each of us. The fact that our Lord was tempted let us know that he was fully human. Last week in Jesus' transfiguration on the mountain, his divinity was more fully revealed. But this week, with his temptation, Jesus is shown to be fully human. He knew the pull and the strain of temptation just as we do. You are probably facing temptation right now. We have many stories about people who face temptation in the Holy Scriptures. Adam and Eve were tempted too. They were the first humans to be tempted. But their story ended very differently than Jesus' temptation. After fleeing Egypt, the Israelites were tempted for 40 years in the wilderness. One morning, when King David was probably composing a new psalm of praise to God, he saw in the distance how a very beautiful woman was bathing on the roof of her house. David, the man whose heart was close to God, instead of looking the other way and continuing with his composition, allowed himself to be overcome by temptation. And we already know the story. The Bible is full of stories of how real people face temptation. They were people like us. Regardless of age, social or economic conditions, all human beings consecrated to God or not, all face temptation. We are just as vulnerable and in need of God's guidance as everyone else. There is a well-known story about Abraham Lincoln that illustrates this point. When Lincoln was a young lawyer in Illinois, he took up the case of a poor widow. She was suing the president of a bank for five dollars in damages. The bank president paid a visit to Lincoln. Lincoln's law partner was also present in the office at the time. The bank president offered a bribe to Lincoln to throw the case. But Lincoln refused. The bank president was not finished. He offered a higher amount. Lincoln still refused. So the banker went higher. Again, Lincoln refused. The banker tried one more time, offering even more money. Suddenly, Lincoln leaped from his seat to threw the banker out of his office. Lincoln's partner was stunned. Hey, he said, what just happened? Three times, he tried to bribe you. And you just sat there, but this last time you kicked him out of our office. Lincoln answered, he was getting too close to my price. Temptation. 
remind us that we are that we are vulnerable. We are human. We walk in a humble path. We are all subject to temptations. Since ancient times, it has been said that we are tempted by the devil, by the flesh, or by the world. I will not go into those distinctions, but I will directly quote the biblical text of James 1.13-15, which says, No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my beloved. Temptation, it is good to clarify, temptation by itself is not a sin. But giving it room, filling it with our thoughts, already begins to be a sin. And even more so when we put temptation into practice. One is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Tradition says there are the temptations of vainglory, pride, greed, covetousness, lust, or inordinate or illicit sexual desire, and vile. Gluttony, which is usually understood to include drunkenness, wrath, or anger, and slot. Beloved sibling, so that what are your temptations? Each person is different. Perhaps the three most common temptations today are lust, the possession of goods, and power, feeling in control of all. However, overcoming temptations can also strengthen us. Luke 4, 1 and 2 says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing of all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. Jesus was tempted three times by the devil. First temptation, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Second temptation, let him up and show him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you, I will give their glory on all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Third, then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will build you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Say that. Tested Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus faced a much bigger question 
that the three temptations laid before him. At the core of all, then is how he will address his mission and ministry. There is a reason this period of temptation comes before Jesus launches his ministry. The first temptation involves food. After fasting for 40 days with that bread, Jesus could satisfy his personal hunger. Still, not only that, there are other implications. He could supply food without end. Not only could he end his own needs, but he could also wipe out hunger everywhere. everywhere. No one would ever die from starvation again. But is that what he wants his ministry to be the next free meal? Obviously, Jesus does not want anyone to perish for lack of food. But he hasn't come to turn stones into bread. Jesus defeated Satan with the words. It's written, one does not live by bread alone. Jesus is come to be the bread of life from heaven. He will give his body as bread for the world today's communion Sunday. The human being must till the land with his work to produce food for all. God put the human being in this world to take care of the orchard, the garden. God expects human beings to be in solidarity with others. No one should, be, should die from a lack of food. But that is a human responsibility. The second consideration involves power. He would surely use this power for good. Jesus could apply his will to the world and it would be done. He could bend the wills of world leaders. The Lord could end wars, all the wars. He could eliminate selfishness. The world would be at peace. He could form the hearts and minds of all the people into unity and brotherhood. Certainly God has the power to do. Satan asked Jesus to worship him which is blasphemy. It's idolatry. For which Jesus replies to him, it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And thus, Jesus quoting the holy scriptures overcomes the temptation. Jesus will come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. But his purpose is not to be a temporary king in the present period. His ministry is one of service, not domination. Please see what the Gospel of John relates. At the time of Jesus' most tremendous popularity, he had just fed more than 5,000 people. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five burly loaves led by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him think. He withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The people wanted to force Jesus to make him a king. He avoided becoming a temporary ruler because that was not his mission. The church and the body of Christ should not divert its mission. 
It's visualized in announcing Christ, in doing good, in having a prophetic voice, not in launching for a temporal power, not in being just another ruler. The third temptation regards his security. Jesus could use bless you. Jesus could use his divine powers to create a son of safety. Nothing terrible will happen to him. No evil will ever befall him. Not even the cross. I'm apparently very innocent, but completely poisonous temptation. Full of evil. Because I want you to remember that the devil is not your friend. Even if he comes to you showing a friendly face, face and you are in a time of weakness, don't trust him. Never make deals with the evil one. Then Jesus answered him, it said, don't put the Lord your God to the test. Thus Jesus defeated the devil. He did not shoot lightning at him. He did not move a finger. There was not a show of special effects. Jesus beat him by making proper use of the Holy Bible. We cannot hope to overcome the worst temptations without biblical knowledge. If you are a believer without biblical knowledge, you are in serious trouble. You must know that you are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Many years ago, many churches were scandalized by the movie The Last Temptation of Christ. And by doing so, they gave, they, they gave the film a lot of fame. The movie's premise is what would have happened if Jesus had refused to go to the cross and had decided to live his life like any other man. But did you know that Jesus was very close to that? A moment when he opens his heart to the eternal Father and tells him frankly that he does not want to go through the path of the cross on the night of Mount the fourth day, our sweet Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, there, there in all his humanity, opens his heart to the eternal Father. I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay away with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Jesus really suffered. Jesus really faced the temptation to refuse the cross. Still, before those moments, he decided to submit to the eternal Father once again. Jesus knows very well what it means to be tempted and how to overcome temptation. In the garden of Gethsemane, he once again defeated that temptation. He did it out of love for you and me and out of obedience to the eternal Father. The mission of Jesus does not include avoiding pain. His mission came with the cross as a final destination. It's a destiny he will agonize over. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he will pray that. And if at all possible, may this God pass from him. But his binding thought is not my will, but thy will be done. The suffering of the cross is central to the fulfillment of his mission. Jesus 
Jesus does not avoid it. He was born to die on the cross so that you and I and everyone who believes could obtain salvation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Jesus overcame <coughs> overcome temptation and did not use powers outside his world. Instead, he defeated Satan by using the Holy Scriptures. He overcome temptation with his obedience to the Father and his love for us. We are all tempted in different ways. And how we can overcome temptation, our temptations? First, study the Word of God. And if you can try to memorize passages, quote them in the hour of temptation. Then obey God by faith. Trust only in Him. Remember, the devil is not your friend. Temptations are not your friends. They want to steal from you. I will be clear with you. The devil wants to steal your life. The devil wants your soul to be not damaged. And that you go to hell. That's for sure. But you have your faith in God. And just as Jesus was also motivated by love for you, when temptation comes, you can be a winner by faith in God and motivated by love. For example, for your family. It's not worth losing everything for a worst, a wrong decision. Remember, God is your friend. He is on your side. He has shown it to you so much so that Jesus overcome temptations and gave his life for you. Hallelujah! I will give you two last tips or two last recommendations. First, you must have a group of faithful Christian friends who help you in your moments of temptation not to fall. <clears throat> and second, if the temptation is so great and you are about to fall, do what Joseph the dreamer did in the Bible. Better run away, don't fall into temptation. That was that basically did Joseph the dreamer. You belong to God. You are God's beloved. You have been claimed by God. And neither death nor life nor anything in all of creation can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Please let's pray. Our Father, let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Give us strength to our faith. Help us to be obedient Christians and help us to be motivated by the love of our loved ones. Give us Christian friends who will give us help and good advice and come to our aid when any temptation is too great. We ask you to strengthen our spiritual life by participating in the Holy Communion. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.